The Russia-Ukraine war will mark its one-year anniversary tomorrow. And the only visible direction in the conflict that has impacted the world is more aggression and further divides. R President Biden visited Kiev and assured continuous Western support to Ukraine. Russian President, on the other hand, Vladimir Putin, vowed victory. Now, experts say Russia and Ukraine are preparing for offensives that could potentially turn the war uglier. In recent weeks, Russia has intensified its push to fully capture Ukraine's eastern region of Donbas. And to counter this, the Ukrainian armed forces are now waiting for battle tanks and other new weapons pledged by the West. You know, what we're already, you know, seeing here is that the Russians are digging in for the long haul. They have no intention of losing, depending on what their definition of, you know, winning is at this uh, particular stage. And Ukraine cannot afford uh, to have Russia basically annex its territory. Meanwhile, Putin has declared that Russia will continue to pay attention to increase its nuclear forces. He also added that they will begin mass deliveries of Zircon C launched hypersonic missiles. We will continue to inundate our forces with advanced technology. There are new strike systems, intelligence gathering and communications equipment, drones and artillery systems. Our industry is now rapidly boosting production of all types of conventional weapons. The UN General Assembly convened an emergency session on Wednesday in an effort to adopt a resolution urging Russia to halt its offensive in Ukraine. The high-level meeting comes before the first anniversary of the Russian invasion of its neighboring country. Speaking at the session, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres stressed that the war is having a dramatic humanitarian and human rights consequence that extends beyond Ukraine's borders. The UNGA is set to adopt a resolution, stressing the need to reach as soon as possible a comprehensive, just and lasting peace, in line with the founding UN Charter. And Ukraine has reached out to India for support, ahead of the vote on Ukraine peace resolution. We're now being joined by Anas Malik, who's there on ground. Anas, you're there in Kiev, and we're nearing the one-year mark. How is it expected to go beyond tomorrow, February 24th, once we pass the date? Well, we're in the southeastern city or southern part of the country, uh, and uh, this is the city of Mykolaiv, which is strategically very important because it gives. It is in proximity to the Black Sea, to the Odessa port. Uh, this is a shipbuilding city. Uh, it has at least three shipbuilding yards. I'm standing outside the ATB market, which was bombed uh, by the Russian side earlier in the early days of the invasion. Uh, there has been a literal uh, battle, a tank battle over here uh, between the Ukrainian army and the Russian army and the Russian army had been pushed back after a six week long or seven week long battle which led more than 130 civilians dead. Now coming to your question Shivan, uh, we're expecting more and more attacks in the next 24 hours or so. A warning has been issued by Ukrainian defense officials uh, until Sunday at least. That's what they say that their intelligence indicates that Russia will be intensifying uh, its attacks more so to do with shelling and these missile attacks that have been happening across Ukraine. Uh, they would be intensified at least until the 26th in order to quote unquote commemorate their uh, uh, their uh, launch of the special military operation or the invasion on Ukraine that uh, that was that began rather on the 24th of February. Uh, now uh, what also has been advised is to remain vigilant, stay indoors, uh, nearer to the shelters uh, uh, and we've seen a practical display of this uh, happening already in Kherson, uh, not very far from where I am, about an hour and a half from where I am. Uh, it, 
it is also in proximity to the Russian side and uh, we've been seeing that since the past 48 to 72 hours there has been quite a lot of shelling being done in parts of Kherson. Shivan? Anas, we've heard of Zaporizhia which is very much within the target radar. We've heard of if the eventual aim of Russia being to capture Kiev. Are there any other cities, Bakhmut included, are there other, any other cities where you feel Russia could be going for first before any other in Ukraine? Well, uh, since the invasion began, Russia first uh, went towards the Donetsk and Luhansk region. Then, uh, uh, then uh, we saw uh, the uh, the Russian side advancing to parts of uh, uh, Mariupol, and uh, which is uh, currently what the Ukrainian side says is illegally uh, in Russian uh, occupation. This is what the Ukrainian side says. Um, and uh, very recently, we saw the we saw the reports of the fall of Solidar in the east uh, near to Bakhmut. Uh, the battle around Bakhmut, they con it continues to rage on. Uh, Zaporozhia was previously under Russian occupation, but it was freed. Same is the case with Kherson and Kharkiv. Uh, Kherson and Kharkiv both are now back into Ukrainian control. So while the Russian side would want to march on, the other issue is uh, of sustainability. And that is something that the Russian side has been lacking at, which to which is an advantage to the Ukrainian side. And they go on and uh, go on to reclaim uh, these spaces or these cities uh, uh, that are in parts in other parts of uh, Ukraine. Now, uh, what you mentioned about earlier about Kyiv, that might have been the initial plan uh, after the invasion, but that doesn't seem to hold on. And that is the reason we're seeing that uh, some so somewhat small scale attacks have been happening on Kyiv, but larger scale armory or uh, uh, weaponry that has been used has been here. Uh, it has been used here where I'm standing. Uh, we, the previous live position that we were at outside the Mikhailov Regional Administ Administration, uh, cruise missile had targeted that building last year by killing at least 30 for people uh, time and again we've seen Mikolaev being shelled as well uh, so uh, by and large the uh, the strategy that looks like a uh, prime face uh, on the part of the Russian side has been that they would want to come in from the east uh, more to, more so towards the east in right. order to annex or isolate other parts of Russia from what is considered to be the corridor towards connectivity because as I said from here it is a very strategic position it gives access to the Odessa port uh, which essentially gives access to uh, the connectivity hubs be that be air, uh, aerial connectivity hubs be that be the train connectivity hubs or more so to do with the uh, water connectivity hubs uh, Shivan. Thank you for all those updates Anas. Stay safe.